Chris Morris, thanks for coming in. Um, I think our story goes way back. Um, but I always like to go back to 2019 where you walk past me at Supersport Park. South Africa were having a training session and you said, bud, they haven't picked me for the World Cup. And I was like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> and then fast forward, Anrik Nokia hurts his hand. You're off to World Cup 2019 and you end up being the highest wicket taker. Is that sort of a highlight for you, knowing you've done your country proud, even though the campaign didn't go well for the team? But for you, that was that was a massive tournament. Yeah, so that was um, quite a long story. Um, obviously, that happened in. I, I was expect. I, I thought I was being the squad because I'd been in playing for South Africa for so long. I was one of three all rounders: myself, Dwayne Petorius, and Andile Pechlikoy. Andile was. The number one selection, um, and myself and Duane were battling up, but I, I thought I'd be in the squad. I didn't think, you know, maybe we would fight out for a spot in the games, but I thought I'd be in the squad. But obviously, Anrich had come come into the mix and had bowled really quickly and impressed. So I thought, well, it's obviously it's myself and Duane. And when I got told I wasn't in the World Cup squad, I thought, okay, here we go. Um, cool. Disappointed, as you know. I used a bit of fruitful language with you. Um, but yeah, when I got the phone call, first of all, I got the phone call saying that I'm um, a reserve. I mean, I basically just took the phone and said, whatever. Yeah. God, come on. You don't need it. Like, come on. I know I'm not in the squad. Thanks for coming. Thanks for reminding me I'm a reserve. If you're not first, you're last. Yeah, exactly. Bobby, exactly. You know, so, yeah. I mean, and it's every player's team to go to the World Cup. And, you know, 2020 World Cup's cool. It really is. Like, it's 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 part of the thing, but it's over so quickly. Mm. You know, you lose one game, you're basically out yeah. of the tournament. Whereas a 50 over World Cup, especially in the format that they were playing in 2019, it's 10 games. You play against everyone. So it's a proper World Cup yeah so to miss out on that I was I was obviously gutted I knew it was the end of my cricket my, my South African cricket career um, I knew I'd already played my last ODI I played uh, I wasn't picked in the T20 squ- uh, or in the World Cup squad we were currently with a T20 tournament against Pakistan or a series and I mean my motivation levels weren't very high yeah just got on with the job I know it's always a always a, a passion and a pleasure to play for my country and a privilege but I got on with the job and just got And I actually had quite a good series because <laughs> yeah. I almost let go of everything. And once my last time, I'm going to have fun. Absolutely pissed myself during the anthem because I knew it was my last game for the country. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, Anrich breaks his thumb. My phone rings in India. I show my wife who's phoning me in Vizag. I roll my eyes going, oh, please don't be Dale. That was my first reaction. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please don't be Dale because Dale was in the squad. Anrich's broken your thumb. Congratulations, you're going to the World Cups. I said, okay, well, first of all, you don't have to congratulate me. No. Yeah, some players missed out. Exactly. A guy yeah. that's made it ahead of me. So don't congratulate me, but cool, whatever. Like, I'm at the RPL. I've got to focus on this. We were in a playoff, which I wasn't picked for either. Um, <laughs> uh, busy with the playoff. So I was like, listen, like, I can't think about this now. Thank you. It's cool. We'll sort logistics out when the RPL's done. I need to focus. I got my family with me in India. It's heavy at the moment. The photo's full of fans. Like, let's yeah. just crack on. And I remember sitting down and, that, and the worst part for me, and I, and I look at it now and I regret it a little bit, I was, the only time, the first time I got excited to go to the World Cup was when we were at the airport. So I had a, basically a full three weeks of build up to that World Cup of logistics, passports, visas, kit, all of that, um, a build up to the World Cup and I wasn't excited. That's crazy. I really wasn't. Like it, that was, that was, I said to yeah. you, I said, I, I feel like I'm, like I almost felt like I was betrayed, and I know it happens in sport. That's what happens. You you yeah. don't get picked at school. Some they're tough decisions. Like an afterthought almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't have that fire in my belly because I was like, well, I'm not. I'm going to the World Cup. I'm not going to play because I'm coming in as a replacement. Yeah. Um, landed in South Africa. They wanted me to fly straight from India to Cape Town to meet up with the squad, and I said, listen, Doc, come on. Like Doc Musuji was our manager. I said, please, can I sleep in my bed? Yeah, just one for night. one one. I just want one <laughs> night at home, please. Like I haven't been, and at that stage, I'd been on tour, I think, for three months. Wow. So I was like, please, can I just go home for a night? Quinton de Kock played the IPL final after the game. Didn't even get a chance to celebrate with his team. Flew home to, to meet up with the team because we had a climb Table Mountain in Cape Town. I remember team that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So a lot of chat, lot of chat, lot of stuff we had to get uh, out of the way in preparation for a World Cup. And yeah, it was a, uh, it was uh, when you, you alluded to doing my country proud and stuff. For me, it was a case of um, I got there and it was terrible because, I mean, at that, that stage, I'd obviously lost faith in the coach. The coach had lost faith in me. We weren't getting on very well. Yeah. We had a heart-to-heart. We won't say what was said, but we had a heart-to-heart. And I eventually said to the boys, who were my closest four, was Aidan, Dale, and Dave Miller. I mean, myself and Dave have come together since high school and Dale and I clicked because we both 
the same person when it comes to music, skateboarding, extreme sports, and just Foo everything. Fighters. Foo Fighters. <laughs> and all that I should stuff. should have actually worn my yeah. Foo Fighters t-shirt. And, um, and Aiden, obviously Aiden, and as he was a youngster coming into the pro, uh, went to the protest, even the Titans, you know, him and I were very close mm -hmm. or are very close. So I said to them boys, I'm, I'm here to have fun. Like, and when I play my best cricket is when I'm having fun. So I'm gonna enjoy myself. I'm here for you boys. Like, it sounds horrible, like stuff what the coaches said and yeah. all of that. I'm not there for you. I'm not here for them. I'm here for you boys and we can have a good time. And we did have a good time. Unfortunately, I think we would be a little bit dishonest in saying that we thought we had a squad that could win the World Cup. Yeah. We, the honesty was is that our squad wasn't good enough. And that's the reality. And I'm not knocking players. We had some of the world's best players to ever play the game. But if you looked at the other squads, we were behind the eight ball from day one. Yeah. Fast forward, don't play the first game. England beat us. Play the second game against Bangladesh. Bangladesh beat us. Not beat us, they hump us. Um, <laughs> and then I thought, oh, well, here we go. And then for, from from then on, I just started rolling in terms of wickets. I, I cleared my game plan up, just tried to do everything as simple as possible. You're and bowling quick? Not really quick. It was more accurate, I okay. felt. I felt like I was bowling as quick as I could, but this old body <laughs> couldn't go any faster. Um, but it was, it was, yeah, it was a good experience. And like I said, I just kept things simple and... I mean, when you're young, you play for your teammates, and it, I felt back. I felt like that was it back in the day yeah, when I was yeah. playing for my teammates again, and, and I think the success came from that. And in that day, it was a disappointing campaign. We didn't do as well as we should have. I don't think we were as bad as our results showed, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was a hell of an experience. It was a standout moment for you, I think. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Oh, and and I mean, uh, Imran and JP, had, Imran Tia and JP had both announced that the, the World Cup was going to be the last ODI series, and only my closest four and my family knew that. I was never going to play after that again for South Africa. Yeah, that was the reality. Yeah, and then something drastic happened. So, and that was a decision you had made. I'd made that already. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I made that before the World Cup. So yeah. I thought I wasn't going. So, end of the day, at that last game in Manchester, I had my wife and my two-year-old in the in in the stands watching me in the anthem and blubbing. When everyone's going, oh, look how passionate he is. No, it wasn't passion. It was realizing I was going to sing my anthem for the last time. Yeah, so that's crazy. I was, I was, yeah, it was a, and my last game I played for South Africa, we beat Australia, which is cool. So yeah, that's days. a nice one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but your journey, let's go back to Pretoria Boys High. Yeah. Um, and that's actually where I first met you. I mm. was a useless hockey coach. I think it was under 15 C or D. Yeah, but uh, B. B, sorry. But B. you spoke very well. I, I was a motivational coach. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was fascinating that, you know, after that sort of experience as a student, uh, you running around, um, you know, trying my best to, to teach you guys how to play hockey, but you always had the skills. But your cricket career already had sort of sh taking shape there. I think you yeah. have still the record for the most games for boys high. For well, I, I think that went away a couple of years ago because now the kids are playing every four games a week, well, T20s is, and yeah, all of that exactly. stuff, whereas but we had 50 overs every Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it can, just gives you away how many years it at school. But, <laughs> but at that point... At high school, did you know that you were wanted to be a professional cricketer? That dream was never, ever not there. Uh, my dad played professional cricket, yeah. so you always want to do what your dad does. I mean, well, most of us. My dad was my hero, so I thought, yeah. I want to do what he does. Excuse me. And, yeah, it was just there. I, I had the natural ability. I think I had the natural talent. Possibly a little bit lazy, as everyone will tell you. Um, but it was never not a dream. I ate, ate, slept, dreamed cricket. It was my thing. You know, and it's, I, think, I can't remember which... One of my mates reminds me of, I told the teacher one day, saying, yeah, you how, you gonna, how do you think you're going to live in the world with these marks? And I said, ma'am, don't worry about marks. I'm going to play for South Africa. <laughs> really? I think that's my maths teacher, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so it was a long journey. I mean, look, I, a lot of guys have a little bit of a fast track, which is natural. It's, you know, it's flavor of the month or coach that likes something in you. And I had to do the long route, which was cool. I, I didn't mind it. I actually built a lot of character. I found out a lot about myself. But I always wanted to be a professional cricketer. It was yeah. the dream. I used to have posters on my wall like every other Who kid. Who was your idol? Alan Donald. Yeah, what a legend. Alan Donald was my guy. And uh, to Sean Pollock to, to a degree at the at a later stage. Um, but Sean, um, Alan Donald and Kirtley Ambrose. Those are my two two guys that I... And Kirtley I, had that oh, man. The shake before he delivered. Oh, man. Oh, he was my... Awesome. He was my have you ever met him? Yeah, met him a few times. Oh, I, mean, awesome. I was very starstruck the first time I met him. I was 15. And I was actually playing, I was actually as a batter for Northerns. Okay. But we had like, a, the, remember Lashings Tour? Yes, yeah. They came to start Super Sport Park, played against the Titans, and we had like a workshop for the Northerns cricketers, and I was I was there as a batter, batting four in the nets in Super Sport Park. And they said, oh, I need bowlers. Can you give me a throw a ball? So I took a ball and started bowling. And every single West End, and Richie Richardson was there, Kirtley Ambrose, and they all looked at me and said, are you, are you sure you're not a fast bowler? 
I said, yeah, I know I'm a better. Wow. And then that's, I was, I was stashed. I was like, I can't believe I'm actually speaking to the man. Yeah, but, yeah. And then obviously over the years playing international cricket, you, you have a little bit to do with him. But yeah, it's. That's cool, man. And then Sean Pollock led it because I obviously wanted to be an all-rounder. So yeah. he, he could smack it at the end. So I quite enjoyed him. So from school, then it was Northwest, right? School. How did it quite come about? Because once you leave matric, had you already got a deal? Or? No. So I did the boys' our six-year plan, as everyone should know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I did an extra year at school just because my ma my marks weren't good enough in, okay. in standard nine. I passed, but yeah. my dad said it's not good enough. Have another go. So I said, well, okay, more cricket, less responsibility. Cool, let's go. Head of cricket was he was just so disappointed. Oh, he hated it. <laughs> FMJ, one <laughs> FNL, one of my men. Um, he, um, yeah, and it went straight into club cricket um, at Vill Arini Villages, where I grew up playing as a, as a six-year-old. That's where I played my club cricket as a youngster. Great club. My mini cricket and stuff. Yeah. So I grew up there, so it was a no-brainer. And Greg Smith was the head coach there. He played quite a big role in my development as a, as a cricketer, even if it was for two years. Second year of club cricket, because I, I played as a batter because I had a shoulder injury. My shoulder hadn't developed properly or something. I had to do a bit of bike and okay. and stuff like that. So just growth spurts. That's all it was. Um, 20 year, 21 year old flew on my 21st birthday, flew to England, played club cricket for in Sussex for, for, for six months. Learned a lot about myself as a human being. Yeah. Um, and it's myself as a cricketer. Came back, played a little bit for um, Irene Villages. And then what happened was, it's actually quite a bad story. We are watching the Titans play against the Dolphins at Supersport Park. And my dad, who obviously played cricket, saw a guy, by the, a gentleman by the name of Gordon Parsons writing down notes because he was the Lions bowling coach. Mm. And he was getting trying to get some tactics on how the Titans are doing things and, and, and. So my dad went across, because I've been, I've been, look, all I want to do is play cricket. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. yeah which is bad. <laughs> I was a, I was a waiter. I worked for my mom's law firm as a runner. I, I did, I did a lot of stuff. So dad went across and said, listen, Gordon, I know you're the bowling coach at the Lions. Can you have a look at my son? Like, we're honest. If he's not good enough, he's cuck, tell him he's gone. Yeah. And I can take it on the chin. You're not good enough. You don't want to score. You don't have what it's got. Go work. Cool. Happy. So Gordon being Gordon is always keen on looking at talent. Or look at anyone. That, yeah. And that's what I love about him. He'll always give someone a chance. And he's honest with you. Went to the Lions amateur practice. Had a really good net. Bowled well. Bowled quick. And what I didn't know is that Dave Nosby, the head coach, who knew about it, was actually standing right at the back of the parking lot watching me from a distance. Fast forward two weeks later, I get a phone call. I want you to come to the Lions practice, come bowl to the Lions. Ran in, bowled as quick as I could, bowled really well, bowled really quickly. A week later, Dave Nosworthy phoned us and said, listen, there's an, phoned me and said, listen, there's a Lions Academy in Potchefstroom. It's usually for um, first class capped players, yeah. but you're our wild card. So it's basically six months in Potchefstroom in an academy. There's nothing but cricket and, and students. We don't <laughs> talk about that, but... Bourbon and literally, Sorry. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bourbon Street, still there, eh? is it? Yeah, still oh, going wow. strong. Okay. Um, but literally, got to the Lions Academy and did not do anything else but focus on my cricket, and it was the best thing that ever happened because uh, we had lectures on cricket, we had lectures on history, which I know all of it because I'm a nuffy. So we had to do projects. We trained every day. We did everything. Sean Bounds, the hurdler, he was our yeah. training. He was our fitness coach. So we got some unbelievable fitness tips and all not tips fitness training yeah got injured in my first year um then i tore a tore a stomach a side muscle but quite badly so i couldn't bowl so i had to play as a batter which i wasn't really my role at the lions and or at, at northwest or the lions academy then i thought at the end of the academy what are we going to do i need to i need to do something here. no one had signed me the lions amateur side weren't interested and i'd heard nothing from northwest dave knows with the organized me a job to be the vitz third team cricket coach okay <laughs> get paid 7,000 rand a month, but I had to be the first team cricket coach and then play for Vitz. And I was going, I'm 21 years old and I've got to tell a 36-year-old <laughs> or a 30-year-old what to do. This isn't going to fly, but I don't have any other options. I yeah, thought, right, yeah. let's do this. And literally, it was all like a, a snowball. I got a phone call from Dave, um, from Jacques Fall in Poch, the CEO, is now the CEO of the Titans, yeah. and said, we're going to we want to sign you. So I said, cool, I'm in. Sign me, gave me accommodation. And the rest was history. I literally, Gordon, Gordon had walked into his office and said, if you sign Morris, I'll tell you I play for South Africa in five years' time. And it was three and a half years later yeah. that I played for South Africa. But it was the best thing ever because I could only focus on one thing and that was cricket. Yeah. And it was, it was awesome. And I mean, like you've done it, and my executive producer, Ray, says, you're almost like the unlikely cricketer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you haven't done, if you know, like you're the fast track. You've mm -hmm. had to go and graft 
show your skills and do it the hard way. Yeah, it's uh, look, it's it's a long, it's, I don't regret any of it because it made me who I am today, and it, it you know it forced me to work when I didn't want to work. It forced me to focus on cricket when technically guys wouldn't be focusing on cricket. Other guys would be going out on a Friday night. I'd be sitting at home watching highlights of something, or yeah. it, and it sounds it sounds like it really boring. I promise you, it wasn't boring. I just did it a few times, <laughs> but I also I I, I learned a lot and I met a lot of mates on the way that yeah. that were still to this day are part of my inner circle that have kept me going and. Whenever I've needed advice, they were there when I started and saw how my success developed and they were there when it started. So yeah. they've got the same same little bit of advice, the things that remind me of when I was younger. How's the transition been to retirement? Because I think you caught a lot of people off guard. Mm. And I know you and I had this conversation just before you were going to do it. And you just got a massive IPL mm. a year later. Um, but Lisa was pregnant or the baby was already mm. on the way and... I think at that time, a lot of people were like, but Chris is still a gun, you know, mm. he can still play. But did that moment just feel like it was time? Yeah, so a lot of guys talk about, they woke up one morning. I think it's Greg Chappell. So you wake up one morning and you go, I don't do this anymore. That was a case. It had, it had been in my mind for a while, mm. possibly because of the COVID restrictions. You know, in the past with a young family, your family could come and tour with you before COVID. You could just get put them on a plane and they'll fly over and yeah. you, you can, like especially IPLs in Dubai, what more do you want? Yeah. You know, get on a plane, come, and we cruise around Dubai. Wife's happy, kids are happy. I'm happy. I got my family there, and I'm playing cricket. COVID bubbles. Family can come along, but what people don't realize is that you got to do a ten day quarantine. Oh. So now, with a pregnant wife and a, a three year old yeah, in no. the same hotel room, no, it's not going to fly. Then you do your quarantine. Cool, you light out your hotel room, but you're not allowed out of the hotel. Yeah. So you've got a wing, and it, listen, it's it, it's really luxury, and it's it's not jail, it's not prison. So. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to make it sound cheap, but it, it's, it eventually gets to you when you can't leave the hotel. You see the same room, the same stairs, the same lifts, the same faces, the same pool, the same beach that's too hot to go stand on because it's Dubai. And you just, you, run, you, you run out of things to do. Yeah, yeah. You it sounds horrible, RC, especially RCB. RCB looked after us unbelievable. Well. We had our own little team tent, golf simulator, there was PlayStation, there was a massive big screen. But you can only do that for so long. You need to interact with with human beings yeah, you need to yeah. get out of it. you need to be in your own space and those will start talking to you eventually and I was I was a big big believer in people were saying oh mental health I'm oh, a mental health struggling and I used to say you're using it as a crutch yeah. like you're not doing well in cricket I oh, know my mental health no 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 crack on harden up like but in the last year and a half of my career I went okay I'll hang on a beat here this is mental health's a real thing yeah. because like I said my walls started talking back to me and I was going hang on I can't be doing this no come back to South Africa <coughs> laryngitis um, come back to South Africa IPL kick happens I said the Titans listen. before the auction happened I said Titans I'm in let's go I want to play white ball cricket I'm in even even for the cricket I just want to play Yeah. then the IPL deal happened in, in um, it was Rajasthan life changer I mean every single IPL we always take about life change but that was literally a life changer um, and it was cool because I was still committed to the game yeah. I was still committed to playing four day cricket for the, for the, for the Titans I was lack out signed a contract I officially said to him it's my last year, so let's let's crack on. Have fun. Yeah, yeah. let's have fun. Let's win some trophies of the Titans again. My favorite team. Let's go. Um, and literally, we pl we had went on tour to Cape Town and Paul. That was our that was our fixtures. I mean, we've had I've had worse fixtures in my life to go on tour. On. <laughs> Cape Town didn't play, and very cheekily went out after we absolutely humped Western Province. I didn't play, so it was lovely yeah. to watch. <laughs> But went out as you do in Cape Town, and <laughs> everybody caught COVID because we went to a place called La Parada. I'm not I'm not promoting anyone, but that's the place we went to on a Friday. I mean, on a Sunday, yeah. lovely place. Place pumps, pumps, packed. Yeah, we're celebrating a victory. Long story short, we play in Paul the week later. I play with Simon Harmer, and it's the first time I've told someone they're blocking me into retirement. I told the guy I'm not going to mention his name. He opened the batting for Paul. Or for Boer Lunters, whatever they are, or the Rocks, whatever they're called now. And he got 98 runs, and we he opened the bat and got 98 runs. He was the last wicket to fall, and we had bowled 102 overs. So we had bowled more overs <laughs> in the opener, got runs. And I, see, I looked at Simon Holman on stage, and I said, boy, this isn't the same, is it? And he went, nope, because he's been there since the start. Yeah. And that was a little bit of a, a wake-up call for me. And then, oh, <laughs> obviously, everyone having COVID, and other teams as well, but we were we were quite hit hard with, with yeah. COVID. I'm at the Titans. And then they, so what they did was, is for someone who doesn't have a lot of structure, I needed structure. And um, 
they kept moving tournaments. So like the white ball tournaments, they kept moving them. And I was going, I, I can't, I can't keep doing this because I got a child on the way. Yeah. You know, my child's coming in March. Gotta you can't be, all of a sudden yeah. say, no, the white ball tournament's moved from January to March because now I'm not about it. And it's one venue and it's strict. Yeah, no. And, and I just ev eventually, I, I literally woke up one morning and I said to Lisa, I said, you know what, I'm done. And she said, really? I said, I'm done. Phone Jacques for that morning. I said, it's a Sunday morning. Mm. <laughs> I phoned him. I said, Jacques, we meet for coffee. Luckily, he lives up the road. I said, can we meet for coffee, please? He arrived. He said, well, Chris, I've just spoken to Manla, and there's one of two things. Either you want more money, which I know it's not, or you're retiring. And I said, well, you're right on one of them. Yeah. And he put, he ordered four pints of beer. And he said, right, let's, congratulations on a good career. And we, we literally had a couple of drinks just on a Sunday morning celebrating our path together. Because yeah, he, he was my, my first CEO at Northwest. Yeah. And then he went and moved to the Titans. And then when he phoned me, I said, well, when do you want me there? No, he's a good man. Yeah. He's a great man. So it was, yeah, that's, it was, I mean, and, and it wasn't sad. It wasn't a bittersweet moment for me. I wasn't sad. It was just a case of, it was time. And it was your terms. Yeah, it was time. And that's, uh, Stephen Cook actually phoned me and said, listen, you, you're very fortunate to have retired on your own terms. Yeah. Not many people get to do that. So I'm pretty grateful. And I, I, I say it openly, if it wasn't for my financial situation with IPL, I probably wouldn't have retired. Yeah. But because I've had that security now, I could do it. And, and now I'm hopefully going to be doing what I want to do and what I love doing. Um. Let's quickly just chat about that. Did you believe what you you saw when I think your agent was Arthur, right? Mm. Or when you that price came up, did you believe it? I mean, were you dreaming? You know what I'm saying? How, how did you react to that? Oh man, it's so, insane. So I tell you this: so we were we were actually training dolphins. We were in a in a bubble in Durban playing the T20 competition a couple of years ago, and it was Simon Homer's first year back at the Titans. So I was buzzing to have big red back because we went to school together so yeah, it was so exactly. nice to play with them again but we had a practice in Durban in, in Chatsworth and I knew the auction was like happening I knew it so got through practice like come boys let's get moving like it's about to go down let's, <laughs> I just wanted to get in That's yeah. I always talk about my base price my base price is low not because I want people to pump up my price no my base price is low because I want to be there yeah you want to play even if you don't play, you want to be there. It's like the biggest yeah. tournament in the world. You get to it's a proper jewel. Like it's hard work. It really is. Like people don't see it. It's flipping tough, but it's a jewel. Yeah. Like you you we're the world's best player. So I, th I just want to be there. So remember we're getting on the bus. So I kept checking my phone. I was like, okay, all rounders on up, all rounders on up. And literally bolted up, got to the hotel in Mschlanga, got to this uh, the lift and the lift was packed. And I was like, oh. So I bolted up the stairs, myself and Simon Harm. I bolted into my room. My channel on my TV didn't have it, so I had to stream it from my iPad. So <laughs> eventually, Simon knocked on my door, jumped and jumped on my bed, and we were sitting watching my iPad. And because it was an iPad, it was delayed from the TV. Yes. So my phone was going ape while the auction was happening. Oh, man. And I literally just took my phone and put it flat. I was like, yeah, just yeah. leave me alone. I just want to watch this because I, I've only watched one other auction. And that was when I was in Australia streaming it again. Okay. So I was like, put my phone on. My phone was, when I say I was going ape, it was going ape. And I was like, right, something's happening here. Let me watch yeah. this. And it kept going, kept going. And myself and Simon were laughing. And I, <laughs> that sounds bad. I just said to Simon, I said, because Sa Ma Glenn Maxwell, who is, is a lot of people's favorite, went went like really high <laughs> yeah. for a lot of cash. And I remember saying to Simon, I said, I just want to beat Maxwell, <laughs> which was a little bit cocky of me. <laughs> but I said, I just want to beat Glenn Maxwell. Um, and then watch it, and it just carried on going. And, and when the two teams, the two leading teams, Punjab and Rajasthan, I said, I really want to go to Rajasthan because I played for them in 2015. Yeah. And I've got a good relationship with everybody. It's a franchise I know. It's a well run franchise. It's a family run franchise. So I really wanted to go there. And it, yeah, when, that, when it eventually dropped, like Simon tackled me, I was like, what has just happened? Simon's bolted out of the room to go fetch beer. We're playing the next day. <laughs> <laughs> We're literally playing the game the next day. Simon's come back with like six. Bigger those five hundred more <laughs> beers to celebrate in the room, and I remember phoning Lisa, and 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 she didn't, she she obviously knew it was on, but she wasn't paying attention. Yeah, well, I don't even think she watched it. And she said, "I said, babe, the auction's done." And she said, "And I said, I'm going to register." And so she's obviously celebrating yeah, half five because we're going to register. And she said, "How much?" I said, two point three, two two point two three. And she said, "What?" I said, two point two three, babe. That's and then we laughed at each other for a little bit. So it was quite <laughs> funny. It was. Yeah, it was, it was a lack of experience. That's but, awesome, though. And everybody who I haven't replied to once took your phone call. I'm sorry. It was yeah. just a heavy couple of days. Man, <laughs> that's insane. Um, so 
uh, you did some commentary now recently in India mm. and South Africa. How did that go for you? I mean, I was listening and it sounded like you were having fun. It was like it was a, the first one. I was a bit of a deer in headlights because my trip back was tough. Um, I, I was in Scotland carrying Brandon Stone's bag. Terrible um, for the Alfred Daniel. I know someone's got to do it, but I mean, it does work. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I was supposed to be home two days before that. But we had flights cancelled from Holland because of what's ever happening at the Schiphol Airport. So oh, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden, my commentary stint was under pressure because I wasn't being able to get home. And there was no way I was flying straight from Scotland to India and leaving my my wife and two kids to go home. Yeah. So I flew back. F- from we went Scotland, Paris, Paris, Joburg. I got home, took my family to my in-laws. I showered, I shaved, and did everything else I needed to. Got straight back in the car, went back to the airport. Went Joburg, Doha, Doha, Delhi, Delhi, Lucknow, and from the Lucknow airport, went straight to the game to compensate. Wow! So that's why if you if if you did if I was speaking fast to my first stint, <laughs> you understand why I was running on fumes and I was a little bit nervous. But yeah, the more I did it, the more I, I got into it. And I was quite lucky. I've got I had a hell of experienced guys around me. And they gave me quite a lot of... Mike Hazen was unbelievable. All of them were just like, you know what? Just talk. Yeah. Just do your thing. And it was a lot of fun. It, it's, it's, and it was very professional. That's all I can say. It was, I got there and it was professional, professional. But the cool thing was it was the first time in my life I've landed in India with no nerves. I was going to ask you. Yeah, it was quite lacquer. Like, you're not worried about training, not worrying about where the ball's going to go, if it's going to swing or not. Am I going to get smoked? Am I <laughs> going to face the Oaks quickest Oaks trying to hurt me or whatever? I just got there. And it was the first time in my life I've gone from an aircon hotel room into an aircon car, into an aircon booth, and vice versa on the way back. Brilliant. So it was absolute pleasure. <laughs> um, but India's mad, right? Yeah. Um, I think, like, people don't realize... Like you go down in the hotel lobby and it's just swarming with people, especially around uh, international tours, but also IPL. Yeah, it's chaos. Eh? It's, 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 there's a vibe when you land in India. It's like a buzz. Even when, like now, even when I wasn't playing, I arrived and there's that buzz. It's just cricket, cricket crazy. When they say it's a religion, it literally is a religion. It's and You can't explain it. You can't explain the noise. That's the only thing I can say to people. When new players are up, I'm going to go, bud, take it in. So when you walk on that field the first time, do a spin. And I did this when I was younger as well, when I was playing at home, away, anywhere. Take it in, because that noise is absolutely deafening. Is it like a roar? Or it's a buzz. A buzz. And it doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. And I, I sometimes look and I go, what are you guys, what, what's that noise the whole time? Are you guys talking, you're screaming, but they're doing everything. It's, yeah. cha- it's chaotic. But hotels are tough. I mean, I wasn't a high-profile player, but I'm a, I'm a six-foot-four Vito to try and blend in with the crowd it's quite difficult so <laughs> I wouldn't get away with uh, um, hiding whereas the yeah, shorter oaks could slip through the yeah, crowd a yeah. little bit but no it's chaos eh? so Ab- what absolute. did you have a disguise or hoodie or no, well, security detail what so is it's, the- it's terrible cap sunglasses yeah. and earphones and just go and just walk especially even in an airport like it was horrible you put your especially when like when you're walking with a group or a team because with a team you've got your kit on so everyone knows who you yeah. are everyone knows and they're looking for a certain players to take photos with so you put your earphones on, put your sunglasses on, you just walk, walk, and you got security around you, but there's no, there's no personal space there. You'll be yeah. putting a piece of food in your mouth, and I will tap you for a photo. Wow. Which is, it's so the way I looked at Dale explained it the best. So Dale said it's, it's like he's living like a rock star, and he can only do it for so long. So he's gonna appreciate it while he can. And I said that's a great way to look at it because you are living like a rock star. Yeah. It's what the celebrities and, and the paparazzi must feel like in America, where they're just getting hounded all the time. Luckily, I'm done with that stage, so <laughs> I'm cool. They're gonna have it forever, but. I got like Dale as well. He'll have it forever, even yeah. in South Africa. AB. But AB is the same. I mean, yeah. AB's flipping. AB's a, a god in India, so he he can take it on the chin and move on. But he's very good, very yeah. good at the he was public. In the, he was in the RCB bar or something. He's there now. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's doing. Yeah, I, I don't want to give. Like I don't want to give anything. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah. He's doing something on that side that'll, okay. that'll be that'll be coming soon. So 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 strategy wise for him, um, India's been unbelievable. I mean, look, he's. I mean, Maybe he's, maybe he's very good at, at what he does in terms of marketing himself. Yeah. He's, he's very good at it. And he's and he's selfless. And he's also shameless, as I like to call it. If they, someone phones him and says, you need to do a dance on Instagram with no shirt on and tassels, he'll do it. <laughs> you know, just because he's marketable like that. Yeah. And, and, he's, and he's game for everything. And he's yeah. very good at what he does. And look, everything that comes his way, I always tell people, everything that comes his way deserves. Because yeah. for what he did for our game, what he did for the world game, and just for the person he was, um, I'm happy that everything, all these good things are happening to him. I've got to ask you then, you know, the devil Brevis, uh, there's mm. a lot of pressure on him already. The guy's 18, 19 years yeah. old. He's got skills to pay the bills, but like, how does he go about it now? Because 
from what I've seen, he's extremely, and I've met the guy, I've chatted to him a few times. He's so humble and painfully polite. You know what I mean? You can <laughs> and see he told, he told you he was an officer. You know, he definitely did okay. mention officer. He would tell you, three okay, times. got you, okay, got you. <laughs> but, but I'm <laughs> saying, we need to get excited about this guy. Absolutely. He's, um, I always talk about every now and then a prodigy comes along. AB was a prodigy, Jacques Rudolph was a prodigy, JP was a prodigy, Dale Stain was a prodigy, KG, Quinton, they come along. You know, and then you get your 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 um, journeyman who make it into the team and slowly but surely. Like Afaf was a little bit of a journeyman yeah. before he got his Grafted. chance. Grafted. You know, you get those players that do that. Every now and then a prodigy comes along and he's one of them. He's phenomenal. Honestly, he's, he, he really is. And like you say, he's, it's painfully, painfully sweet Yeah. As a, as, as a kid. He really is he's a good dude. He's flipping, loves cricket inside and out. And he's he's got the game for it and he's got the temperament. Like uh, he doesn't back down, and yeah. that's what I love about him. Whereas Abi was the same. Abi would just respectfully not back down. Yeah, just ruthless. And he's got that as well. Yeah. And he's got the potential to entertain for the next fifteen years if he really wants to. Sixteen. I, I like the intensity at which he plays the game because yeah. he's always pushing to make something happen. Like when he's got ball in hand, bat in hand. But what is the strategy with him? People are calling he should be in the T Twenty squad right now after the World Cup we've just had. Is and uh, my personal opinion, and I'm a humble sports broadcaster he's done 100 at t20 he needs a 200 four day with one or two hundreds then he needs a hundred and a couple 50s in the the 50 over stuff yeah. now for me to say like i've arrived because i think he needs cricket under his belt correct he needs a lot of domestic cricket because you learn at that level when it's you bowled 102 overs in potch <laughs> and nothing's happening or whatever it is, yeah. right? Is is that your same feeling or do you I, think it's a case of let's play this kid? No, I'm exactly the same. I'm, I'm a firm believer in you, as, as Dave Nozzi would say, you need to do your apprenticeship. Yeah. So his biggest test is going to be four-day cricket. Um, I firmly believe his technique's good enough. I believe he's got the temperament. He'll be successful in four-day cricket. But end of the day, we're playing a numbers game. Yeah. And he needs to prove that. And it's the tough cricket, you know. It, it's, it, it really is. Four-day cricket's a graft. It, it, it is sometimes because you're going to get there and wickets that aren't going to be helping you and then there's going to be wickets that aren't going to be helping you. So you've got to graft. And that's where you figure out who you are as a person. When you're standing, and like you said, it's, you know, when you're taking your third new ball and you're standing on the boundary at sweeper and there's no one else there except the groundsman. <laughs> and you've got to find a way to make something happen. Yeah. You know, um, And that's what Devot, and that's part of the journey. That's that's uh, that's what I loved about photo cricket. It was a case of I could talk cuck with my friends. I could graft rewarding when you got a wicket or when you got runs it was really rewarding and end of the day there was nothing better than me than <laughs> taking all my clothes off bef just as i got into the change room and sitting and having a cast of light and going right that was a lack of days it was a good day it was a good day yeah. and you've worked for that and you've earned that 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 drink after the yeah. game you know and i'm not promoting drinking i'm just saying i'm still part of the old school era where after the day you have a you have a drink and just take everything well, you process what's yeah, you process yeah. i mean at the end of the day it's cobs yeah <laughs> <laughs> you need to replace because end of the day as a fast bowler you're always bowling the last ball of the day yeah. so when i get off the when i get off the field i'm absolutely yeah. blown so it's nothing better than smashing a, a castle light to my face just before um i have a shower so, you, or an ice bath do you um oh, ice baths are fun i'm sure yeah i got used to them is what it oh, is. Really? Yeah. um you didn't play as much test cricket as you would have liked. Yeah, I watched I watched quite a few test matches. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I watched quite a few. But in, listen, end of the day, I was competing with probably one of the best bowling attacks the country's ever had. So I was going to say. So I got on the chin. You know, there wasn't a place for an, for an all-rounder that bowled 140 and, and could maybe bat at 8-9. Yeah. You know, there was Stain, Malkul, Philander. There's your front three. Then you had a youngster by the name of Kajir Abad. I don't know if you know him. Um, he I've came heard in. about him. Yeah, and then you've got Keshav Maharaj or Dane Pitt who was playing. Yeah. So I have I was fortunate enough to play four test matches. I got to play against England, all four, um, home and away, which yeah. was nice. But yeah, look, I was, I, I've been to places that I've that I've always wanted to be in. I um, always wanted to see. I've been, I played at stadiums I've always wanted to just be at. I've played on the stadi at the stadium. So yeah, I would have loved to have played more test yeah. cricket, but at the end of the day, the dynamics of a, of a South African cricket team, as we know, are quite challenging. And uh, I've, I've always had it in my career. We accept accept balance and you just move on. Um, is it still the purest form of the game for you? I yep. mean, is when tests on, that's you. Like, we play Australian now. Yeah, so. yeah. 100%. That's that's where your cricket has come alive. Yeah. You, know, it's, it's, you know, you can do a lot of things in white ball cricket and, you know, you can hide a lot in white ball cricket, but there's nowhere to hide in test cricket. That's one thing I can tell you. There's every single part of your game will be tested whether it's your concentration whether it's your technique whether it's your physical whether it's your mental it's every single part will get tested 
I remember my my first test. We bowled first, thank goodness, in Cape Town. And I don't know if you remember, I think England got 599. Was that with Stokes? Yeah, no, Stokes, Stokes got a 250. <laughs> it was a great day for the great day for the gingers, eh? Because Johnny Bester got 150. I was about to say, uh, look, um, we presented that day. But I remember day two. We bowled the whole day on day one, and I, I remember waking up the next day going, oh, mm, a little bit stiff, but I'm okay. And then got to the stadium and started bowling, and I went, wow, that is a different stiffness because it wasn't the intensity that gets yeah. to you. It's the actual, you absolutely drained by the end of the day's play. Day three for me was the worst because I remember after day two, I remember walking into our masseuse's room, Craig Govender, who's just left the Proteus side now, one of the greatest to ever do. What did. a good man. One of the greatest to ever do, if not the greatest. He, um, he was working on one of the players, and I walked into the masseuse room, and I, I remember sitting on the bed going, boys, <laughs> if this is what Tej Cricket's about, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm in pain. Yeah. And that was only after two days. Yeah. Luckily, we batted for two days after that. And, yeah, but it was, it was a, it, it's the purest form because it tests you. It, it pushes you to places you don't want to go, and that's where the guys are. That's where the guys want to be. Yeah. Um, speaking of which now, you said, obviously, you can't hide in, in test cricket. Um, but these days with the attention cricket's getting around the world, you go to a World Cup and you can't hide. Mm. And then you lose to Netherlands mm. and the country's going, uh, but that was a banker and we should be playing in the semi-final. And now. who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, so there's a lot of theories. Temba, unfortunately, has, has taken a lot of uh, abuse unfairly, I think. Um, I think he's he's a, he's a great man. I think he's a good cricketer. Um, what is your take on what happened? Yeah, well, f oh, look, well, first of all, I was expecting us to win. I'll be honest. I was. I mean, it's you don't expect to lose to a team like the Netherlands. I mean, we just beat India. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not knocking. Uh, I'm not knocking the Netherlands at all. They've. I, they've got a really from where they were, let's say five years ago yeah. to where they are now. It's a massive. It's, it's a massive thing. First of all, to they're in the World Cup. So yeah. they've, they've and qualified. they came through qualifiers. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm like I always tell people I'm a fan now. I'm like everyone else. I want the I, like I watch the games. I want the protest to win because it's my country. It's my yeah. team. So I was disappointed. I expected them to win. I did not expect to wake up and see we lost. Yeah. I was getting messages left, right, and center going, WTF? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Did we just lose? So I didn't watch the game, obviously. I mean, it's early hours. And I, yeah, it was I, like 2 a.m. start. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I choose life. So I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one because I, I, I was expecting them to win. But yeah. the thing is, I know how they feel. You know, when you lose to a team like Bangladesh, not not knocking them either, but it's a team that at a World Cup you should be beating. Yeah. You know, so to lose a game like that, and I always look back at it and I go, guys, people ask me the next, or that day, I was getting groceries or something, and I said to my, when I got him, Lisa, I said, listen, baby, you know how many people ask me about the cricket? What happened? What went wrong? And I said to all of them, I said, guys, do you remember in 2015, the Springboks played against Japan? Yeah. No one batted right than Ireland. No one batted yeah. than Ireland. We thought we were going to... Walk over Japan, another two points, moving on to the next group stages. And what happened? We lost. Everyone had a massive blow up. Coach needs to be fired. This, that, this, that. Four years later, we win the World Cup. Yeah. But what, what fans don't forget is, is what fans forget is, is that the next day, people move on. They'll abuse you for three days and then they move on. Yeah. And I'm done sp supporting the protest. But that sticks with you for a long time. It really does. You are the team that. Should have beaten. You should have walked into the semi-finals after you beaten India, and you into knockout cricket straight away, and you bottled it. And purely because you got beaten on a on a day by a team that possibly did things better than you. Yeah. You know, it's and and, and that's the reality of sport. A team does something better than you. One person can change a game of cricket, but that day their team did the basics and did things better than what we did. And it's fine margins at the end of the day. It is fine margins. And look, end of the day, guys will say, "Oh, maybe we took them lightly. Maybe we weren't all there." End of the day, it was a World Cup game, and things happen in sport. Yeah. You do arrive going, we're going to beat Netherlands today. Yeah. Possibly their focus could have been on the next game already. Yeah. Because you expected to beat Netherlands. But this is sport. The reality is sport, you can lose. Yeah. Someone was going to lose on the day, and we got kicked in the backside. And unfortunately, it, p it knocked us out of the can and knocked us and pushed us yeah. out of the tournament. So. I feel for the guys. I really yeah. do because I know what they're going through. They didn't go out, They didn't say it about losing. No, it was no. Never, no never, never. But no, and I know how they feel. Yeah. I really do. I, just, I, I, I sympathize with them, and I'll never ever ever knock the guys yeah. because at the end of the day, they were at a World Cup representing the country. Yeah. People will be disappointed, especially the guys who never played the game. They'll be the most disappointed, yeah. and they'll tell you that what we should, what we did wrong. 
and what we should have done. There's plenty of them out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're my favorite. But end of the day, I always tell people, if you guys are feeling crap, imagine how we feel. Yeah. How do you deal with the social media noise? I mean, I know now that you're done playing, but at some point when you're in the middle of the IPL, things are buzzing or it's the 2019 Cricket World Cup, and social media can be a nasty place. I don't read it. You just ignore it? No, I also, I also learned how to turn my notifications off. Okay. So if I don't follow you, you can't comment. Or well, you can, but I won't see it. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, even with my Instagram post, if I don't follow you, I won't see what if you tag me because yo, that tag button on Instagram, I get tagged on the most random post you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <I can't imagine. laughs> but um no, I am I, I'm straight. I just uh, I don't read it. That's Whether probably the good, best bad, way to go. Yeah. Fudge Fudge didn't taught me that. Okay. AB used to AB, AB always used to look like look at it and laugh because he used to, he used to be entertaining for him because yeah. he, the way he looks is good. Not people don't know what they're talking about. So yeah, yeah. yeah so he would laugh at what people are gonna say. A lot of guys would just block people. Whereas like I said, I don't need it. Yeah. And Fudge taught me that Fudge because Fudge was always the fall guy. Cheapers always. Oh man, I feel so sorry for him. He's like Mitch Marsh. He's always the guy that went wrong. No, no, it's your fault that we lost. <laughs> Um, so he never used to read good or bad yeah. and I'm the same if it was good or bad I never read it if an article got sent to me I wouldn't even read it like okay. it was just a case of uh, I'm going to stay in my lane stay in my box mm. just and, do what and, you do yeah and just focus on what I'm going to do because end of the day unless if an ex-player had to come to me and be like listen that was cuck yeah like you did this wrong I'd go okay, cool fair point yeah I'll be better but if a dude who plays club cricket in Joburg comes to me and goes, you did this wrong my man I'm going to go okay well I mean, if, you yeah. played, if you played in front of more than 10 people yeah exactly have you played against the best in the world? No, okay, right. I mean, maybe, maybe. You got there, but no, but no, apart from that, like it's a case of like you taking advice from people who yeah. ha have never been in your shoes. You know, it's like me telling a surgeon you're cutting the wrong vein, Mitchell. Yeah. No, you're not. Because yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. Exactly. So, like, I've end of the day, fans make the game, man, eh? and you got to respect that. But there's a time and place where you can go listen, bro. I, I don't need to hear that right now yeah. because if you're feeling bad, I'd imagine how I feel because I was the one who did it. Yeah. Um, I, speaking as as now as a former player. Looking at uh, the protest setup, uh, Bouch is gone. Mm. Um, uh, Malibongo is in for the just interim. But who would you like to see in that space? Now? No, no, no. I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yes, I, don't, I really don't. Um, is it is it a South African guy? Are we pushing through the channels? Are we bringing someone new in for fresh ideas? I would think it would have to be a South African person. Okay. I think it would have to be because you you need someone to understand what South Africa has been through to where we are where we are now. Mm. Uh, you need someone to understand the cultures and you need someone to understand the dynamics of the different cultures. It's not just you can come into account and say, oh, there's different cultures, but you need to understand them. You know, and that's, Russell was very good. Russell Domingo was very good at that. Mm. Gary Kirsten, who I worked under for, I reckon, three months, was unbelievable at that. You know, and I'm not knocking any of the other coaches. Russell Domingo was very good at that. He understood the different cultures. And that's where Bouch also was very good. And uh, Bouch was under fire for something he did how many years ago? And, you know, we don't need to get into that. But Bouch was very good with man management and respectful yeah. of every single player and every man, as we want to call it, in the team. So I think it has to be a South African person. I really do. It's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing to walk into as a foreigner and understand how it works. Yeah. You know, with the different, these guys need to be doing this, these guys need to be doing that, and then we form one thing. You know, so also captaincy is important. Mm. I think Dean's got the right idea. Dean, especially in the test side, Dean's got those boys where he wants them and playing yeah. for the right thing. Because Dean was also part of that old era. Yeah, I mean, Dean started on a Graham Smith. What more do you want? Mm. You know, and yeah, it's 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 a difficult one. I can't give you a name. I'll no, be no, honest no. with you. There's there's uh, there's so many there's so many names out there. So many coaches out there. But you look at them and you go, oh, they're the one. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if it's a case of uh, look. I love Mali. I think Mali's great. Mali was very good. He's he's gone through the ranks. He was at the Titans when I was in school still. So That's right. he's he's brilliant. And if he had to get the head coach job, I think he'd be awesome because okay. he's he's one of those guys who gets his elbows dirty. Yeah, and graft to the team and he's throwing and balls. He's, he's doing he's, it all, and he's just a good dude. Yeah, he's just a good dude. And straight up and down, yeah, I, I think he'll be great if he if he does end up getting the the, the, the full time gig. But apart from that, I, I can't I can't give you. A front runner. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we, we're going to wrap up now, but you must have a particular moment in your career, like a game or a stadium or something that mm. you'll cherish, that when you close your eyes on this world and it's time to say goodbye, you might have a flashback of that. What, what is that? There's, there's, probably, there's quite a few. So yes. Um, I mean, I'd be silly to say not the pink day. Yeah, that was that was special. I mean, to have a, a wondrous crowd that loud, 
Yeah, I was mad. And for me to be doing what I wanted, or, or me to do doing something like I did on the day was unbelievable. You know, that was cool. To, you know, to win a game for your country is, is something you dream of. Yeah, bucket list. Bucket list stuff. Packed out wonders. Um, test debut, special. Um, but a memory that will st stick with me forever and it's, it's still to this day the loudest and the most electric crowd I've ever experienced in my life. Playing against India in Cape Town, I was 12th man. Dale is, it was Dale's first test back after, his shoulder, after he broke his shoulder. And he was bowling the speed a lot, cleaning them up in the first innings. Virat was going bomb, 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 like on us at, like, as they do as innings. They had a seriously good team. They were number one in the world. And Dale, in Dale's, I remember I, I had to do a, a thing for Cricket South Africa. So they get the 12th man to go and speak to sponsors and stuff in the box. And I remember at the bottom of the lift watching one ball, watching Dale bowl the first ball of an over. And I climbed in the lift and I'd gone up. And when I got to the top and I got to the box, I saw someone else's bowling. And I went, hey. And what had happened was Dale had torn his plantar fascia in his foot, which is like a 16-week injury yeah. minimum. So Dale was out. So I had to naturally... You need a 12th man for the rest of the innings. And obviously they chose the skinny jaunty over here <laughs> <laughs> um, to go fill that gully and that slip all day. I mean, or for the next two days. And that for me was the most electric sound I've ever been a part of in Cape Town because it was obviously so flippin' like passionate and we needed to beat India and India were on us and we were on them and it was just loud and it was... And I, I remember coming off at tea time or at lunchtime looking at Otis going, that is... Unbelievable out there. That is because you had the guy, the Western Bombs Creek Club, in their whites, singing away, being loud, and the crowd is in it. And you obviously had a lot of Indian fans, like they've got everywhere. Yeah. And it was just unbelievable. And then what I won't forget in the moment was Virat was batting, he was on 40 odd, not out, and Vernon was bowling. AB was at mid off, and Vernon was bowling away swingers, away swingers, away swingers. And I tell people this is the best setup I've ever seen in my life. but the setup itself was to execute what he did. He bowled 2.5 overs of a waist swing. And we had slowly but surely started creeping outside off. And and he kept asking, Vernon kept asking Abby, now? And he said, Nia, ni, no, ni. Now? No, not now. And eventually Abby went, now. And he's turned the ball around and he's got one to jag back and he's hit Virat straight in front of middle. And it was, that moment for me was the most amazing moment because that obviously turned the game on its head. Yeah. And Vernon's executed as he usually does. After T, Ashwin had been a thorn in our sides for the whole series of his batting. Kept walking down the crease, kept walking down the crease. Eventually, Quinny coughed through his helmet, stood up to the stumps, flipping first ball. Nick off straight to Quinny. <laughs> Done. And then Vernon Vernon had two for, and then went bang, bang, bang for a fifer, and then we won the first test. Well, the sec it was second test, which means we won the series. Yeah. And it was just... It was an incredible, incredible experience that, that, that I'll never, ever forget because, the, like I said, the crowd in Cape Town was electric and it was just so satisfying to beat India <laughs> because they were such a good team. Yeah. Exactly. They really were. So, yeah, it was, um, it was cool. Chris Morris, thank you for your time. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to, to have you in, in, on the show. And, yeah, what an amazing career, man. Congratulations. You can be very proud. And I know I'm very proud uh, from that 15-year-old <laughs> kid that I met way back when at Boys High. But well done. And I hope that there's many commentary gigs now and uh, we get to hear your voice a lot more on TV. Thanks, but I appreciate it. And yeah, let's do it again. We will do.